Good evening and welcome to Newsbite. I'm Anne Clark and making the headlines this week. St. Helena Airport hosts another open day. Sharks at the Pierhead on Ascension. Prince Andrew School has their annual prize giving and your weekly sports roundup. Despite the official opening being delayed, St. Helena Airport opened its doors and hosted another open day on Wednesday the 10th of August from 1 to 3 p.m. Although not as busy as the last one, it still attracted a lot of attention. Nicole Peters went along for a visit. We're here at the St. Helena Airport where they are holding another open day. These open days are intended for the public to come and visit the airport and see inside and around the building. Although the airport is now fully functional, there is still ongoing construction works outside. The inside of the building, however, looks completed and ready for the arrival and departing of passengers. I am stood behind one of the three check-in desks where departing passengers will check in their luggage. From here, luggage is rolled through to the baggage handling area ready to be loaded onto the aircraft. The land side of the airport has a spacious open plan providing lots of available seating as well as a bank kiosk and a gift shop. The departing lounge has a small cafe area and there is also a fully stocked shop selling items from confectionery to St. Helena crafted souvenirs. The building is also equipped with a disabled lift which can carry up to 400 kilos. The clear glass elevator allows easy access up to the first floor. As well as a gift shop and a banking kiosk downstairs, the airport is also fully equipped with a restaurant and viewing area. Visitors are able to sit down and relax in the comfy lounge area while admiring the view of the runway. The upstairs restaurant even has a children's play area outside. On flight days, families and friends can come here to the covered viewing area just outside of the restaurant to watch the incoming flight. During the day, visitors were also able to take a bus ride from one side of the runway to the next. One of the many visitors who took the time to visit on the day said it was a great opportunity to see the work done to fill dry gut. King and Queen Rock is a landmark that surrounds St. Helena Airport. And in recent weeks, speculation has risen as to whether or not the landmark will be blown up to help alleviate wind shear. Many people on the tour jokingly took photos of the rock formation before saying, we had to do that just in case it's not here next time we visit St. Helena Airport. Despite wind shear delaying the official opening of the airport, the open day still drew crowds to Prosperous Bay. This is Nicole Peters reporting for SAMS Newsbite at St. Helena Airport. Recently, Ascension Island has been getting visits from groups of large Galapagos sharks in the island's shallow waters. The AIG conservation team do not know the reason for the increased sighting of the sharks, but one of their theories is that it may be because of the lack of food further offshore as fishermen have also noticed the absence of fry. The team is hoping that the tracking devices which have been deployed on 11 of the Galapagos sharks and two tiger sharks will give information about the movements of the sharks in more detail and help them make informed decisions about Ascension's marine zones. The AIG conservation team is encouraging the islanders to enjoy this encounter but to be sensible as well. They have said that the sharks aren't known to be aggressive towards people, but international research has shown that they can be bold and behave aggressively and the species have been regarded as dangerous. The Galapagos shark can also be found around some other Atlantic islands, including Bermuda and also here on St. Helena. Prince Andrew School celebrated achievements of students in the past school year with an awards ceremony on Wednesday. After an opening speech by head teacher Penny Bowers, student president Jordan Stevens and student vice president Reagan Backhouse gave visitors an overview of the past year 
and Prince Andrew's school before the presentation began. Awards were given for the Commonwealth Essay Competition, House Competitions, Individual Achievements in Academics, Sports, Creative Arts and Environment and Conservation. Heart of Goal Awards and Citizenship Awards were also presented. These awards acknowledge achievements that don't fall under the Academic Sporting or Creative Arts category. They are issued to selfless members of the community who support the school and to students who unselfishly help others. Examples of students' work were presented throughout the ceremony and guest speakers gave motivational speeches. Vice Chairperson of the school's PTA ended the event thanking members of the community who generously sponsored the school in the past year. Another round of football fixtures were played at Francis Plain and Longwood Golf Club was busy on the weekend. First Golf at Longwood Golf Club, half of the Richard James International 36-hole stroke play tournament was played on Saturday. After round one, Brian Peachy Coleman leads the way having shot a net 66. Hot on his heels, currently sitting in second place, is Nick Stevens on 68. The final round will be contested this coming Sunday. On Sunday, seven teams contested a doubles greensome. Winners were Lawson Henry and Anne George. Anna Kunk Beck having shot 71 along with Nick Stevens and P.G. Coleman who picked up the second place prize. Hannah Danford now gives us the football results. Axes and Fuji shared the points in a 1-1 draw, both goals coming through penalty kicks. Simon Bennett converted for Axes and man of the match Jordan Yon smashed home the rebound after Robert George saved his spot kick. Fuji Selvin Stroud was young player of the match. Bellboys came from behind to defeat Hot Shots 4-1. Ricardo Williams put Hot Shots ahead with well-placed looping header. But an own goal that came from a long throw, an impressive strike from Jamie Phillips, and goals from Tyler Brady and Alex Langham ensured Bellboys walked away with the points. Andrew Speed Yon was man of the match, and Callum Ellig picked up another young player of the match award. Mikey Williams bagged a hat trick as Hearts defeated Refugees four goals to nil. Shane Stroud was also on the score sheet. Refugees performed admirably in the first half, keeping the score at 1-0 when the halftime whistle blew. Refugees' Kristen Leo was man of the match, and their keeper Josh Thomas was young player of the match. Chop Shop Boys continued their unbeaten streak and came away with a 7-1 victory against Crusaders. Kevin Hudson netted a hat-trick and Chris Owen a brace after another Chop Shop goals came from Keegan Benjamin and Julian Henry. Dane Wade converted a penalty kick to give Crusaders a consolation goal. Get up, you know, Ray! The final match of the weekend saw Rovers victorious against Wolves. Rovers netted seven times and Wolves once. Man of the match, Rico Benjamin, ensued he remained hot on the heels of Kevin Hudson in the Hot Shots chart and netted brace. Ross O'Dean also struck twice while Tyler Benjamin, Ronan Legg and James Bridgewater completed the scoring for Rovers. Greg Phillips converted a penalty kick for Wolves. The Football League is now into week 11 and as we move towards the business end of the season, the league is as competitive as ever. Chop Shop Boys has maintained their six-point lead at the top and Kevin Hudson is the leading goal scorer, having netted 20 times. 
Of the 281 goals scored, Rovers have netted an impressive 54 times and only conceded 7. Contrastingly, Crusaders have conceded 78 times and netted just 8. Well, that's it for another news fight. Do tune in again next week for more top stories. I'm Anne Clark and thank you for watching.